Hey all, it's been about a year and a half since my last update on the CNC wire cutter I made. Uh, in this last year and a half I've been using it for various projects and uh, updating tolerances here and there on the parts and pretty much just using it for various projects. Uh, but recently, like within the last six months, I've started getting a bit fed up with the state that I left it in in the last video with the gravity uh, tensioning system using pulleys that tension the wire with lead weights. Um, one of the big issues with this is it's just a large inertial mass that moves around with the gantry so you can't move very fast and you can get oscillations with the weight uh, swaying back and forth. It was also a pain to uh, adjust the gantry spacing so the way I have my wire cutter set up on my table is I have various holes drilled along the table so I can move the length of the wire to do various kinds of cuts. So when I'm cutting wings I can set it up to be a meter apart or uh, 60 centimeters apart or when I want to cut fuselages I'll put it to be 25 centimeters apart. Uh, adjusting it's a bit of a pain because then I have to wind up the wire uh, so that the uh, pulley stays the same length with the weight. So I got it in my head to replace this whole system with a motor so that the motor can spool up the wire uh, to keep tensioning uh, pretty much the same throughout an entire cut similar to how uh, the gravity fed system keeps the tensioning constant and uh, with that setup I can also spool the wire when I move the gantries closer and further apart so I ended up replacing this whole top section with a motorized gearbox with a spool that can spool up the wire. I eventually plan on redoing the entire CNC wire cutter and when I do that I'll probably move this whole setup down because with the added weight up here you end up getting some oscillations, uh, harmonic oscillations whenever the motors are moving. Uh, you, can get, you can get it even when the gantry isn't moving just if the wire is spooling and it hits the right frequency it'll start to shake. But this setup has been working pretty well so far for me, and so I'll show some of the some of the getting there progress. So the first step to getting the motorized wire tensioning to work is to uh, enable a fifth motor in the firmware for the CNC wire cutter. So I'm using Gerbil here, and I'm basing this off of uh, RC Keith's build. Uh, I took his firmware branch and then pretty straightforward to get the fifth motor working. Uh, at the top of the config file you change in axis uh, from 4 to 5 and then the same with linear and then you need to check what the motor name for the fifth axis is. In this case it's V and that's what we're going to give to the uh, G code to control this motor. And then if you scroll down further in the config file there'll be the section for homing and you want to disable homing for the tensioning motor otherwise you can end up causing damage to the machine when it tries to home. Now if you have some sort of setup with a limit switch where uh, if when the wire reaches a tight enough tension it can set off a limit switch then this would probably be fine but in my case I don't have any feedback for how much the wire is tensioned so I just disabled homing of the fifth axis. And I'm pretty sure that's everything that you need to change in the config file. And then you'll have to build it yourself, which I'm using C-Line and uh, WSL for building the firmware. But you can use any Windows-based tools uh, to do the same. It's pretty much, it's just Arduino code, so it's pretty straightforward to build. After building the firmware and flashing it to my Arduino with the ramps board, I installed the fifth stepper driver on the ramps board and then started testing out to see if the motor would work. And in this case I'm just manually moving it to see that it would work before installing it onto the gantry. After getting it onto the gantry then we need to spool the wire into the wire spool. And then once the wire is all spooled up, and the machine's ready to operate, you need to calibrate this axis similar to how you do other axes. You get the steps per millimeter so that one millimeter actually travels one millimeter. And I did this by just pre-tensioning the spring and then moving the wire 30 millimeters and making sure that the spring moved 30 millimeters. <laughs> 
So with the motor and gearbox in place and connected to the wire and able to tension the wire, now I just needed a way to be able to control it. And luckily, since I've been working on my own uh, slicer software, I was able to just implement the motor control directly into my wire slicer. So luckily, all of the controls for this motor uh, could be handled directly in the G-code generation. Uh, nothing involving the motor had to be uh, placed within the actual cut path planning. And so this makes it a lot simpler for uh, various forms of cut path generation because uh, for the most part, G-code generation is completely independent from uh, the inputs that are fed into it. Uh, the G-code is generated the same way, irrelevant of how the, cut how the cut path is planned out or the tool path is planned out. And this also means that if I wanted to, I could uh, create an importer for G-code from other softwares to be able to add in the wire tensioning for the motor. Because right now, with the way I have the machine set up, I wouldn't be able to use Jetty Cut or uh, like Dev Fuse Foam because they can't control the uh, motor or the wire tensioning, which for the most part shouldn't really be an issue because for the last eight months, I've pretty much just been using uh, my software for creating G code. And I've added more features along the way to be able to do stuff that I want to do, but I'll do it part three video for that later for the updates to the wire slicer software so overall uh, i had to add two new features for controlling the wire tensioning on the motor uh, the part that actually drives the motor which is adjusting for the change in the length of the wire and then also a a feed rate compensation because of the way that uh, cut paths are utilized within Gerbil. And I'm not sure if Marlin does it the same way, but for now I've just been using Gerbil. So uh, if you enable feed feed rate compensation, it effectively tries to normalize out the fifth motor because the way Gerbil does the the cut path planning is all, all axis movements need to complete at the same time. So when you add in the fifth motor, if the if the tensioning motor is changing significantly, it slows down the other four motors so that they can all finish at the same time, which was causing some uh, deviations in cut performance. So I added in feed rate compensation so that it can adjust the feed rate on a command by command basis uh, based off of how much the uh, tensioning motor is actually moving. And for adjusting the wire tensioning, uh, it's a pretty straightforward equation for that. Uh, and the way I derived it, you start with the length of the wire, which is uh, the current position of the y-axis minus the height from the y-axis to the uh, tensioning motor, which is just the wire length between uh, the gantry head and the top of the gantry. And then the difference in the x and u positions, which are the x on the two uh, gantries respectively and then the Y and the Z which are the heights on the two gantries respectively and then also the the cutting length which is the separation between the two gantries so just the magnitude of that which is the total length of the wire between each gantry head and then you take the partial derivative with respect to some finite interval and I just dropped the notation for the finite interval everywhere because it's not not super important so the change in length is the negative of the change in the y height. And then the unit vector for the direction that the wire is facing in the x direction times the delta between the change in x and change in u. And then the unit vector for the y times the change in y minus change in z. And part of this derivation was assuming that the, the gap between the two gantries is constant which after implementing this I realized that my gantries aren't exactly parallel because from the front of the gantry moving all the way to the back there is like without without changing the height, y height at all or the difference between the two gantry heads uh, the wire will uh, detension a bit so uh, in the future I could add compensation for this not being constant but for right now, with the spring helping to keep uh, some tension on it and giving it a bit of slack, uh, 
uh, it's not too big of an issue. So with the ability to increase the wire tensioning on my cuts, the next issue I ran into was a single motor controlling the Y, the y gantry height wasn't strong enough to uh, keep the gantry in place. So uh, when the wire tensioning got too high, the motor would slip and then the entire gantry would just slide up. So it ended up ruining cuts or just being generally obnoxious. So I ended up having to add a gearbox to the Y axis as well with the wire tensioning. And this gave me enough torque so that I could keep the, the actual wire holder on the gantry in place throughout an entire cut. The placement of this isn't exactly ideal because I didn't want to change the design of the base plate too much. So it still uses the same mounting as when it was just a single motor with the whole structure coming off to the side. Uh, eventually whenever I redesign the wire cutter I'll integrate the gearboxes a bit better into it and I plan on probably having every single axis having some sort of gearbox on it to increase the torque because I'd like to stay with about the same size motors as I'm currently using but they just need to have a bit more torque behind them to be able to uh, keep up with the increased tensioning on the wire. The next big issue that I encountered with the system is lack of rigidity, primarily due to using 3D printed parts. It wasn't as big of an issue when the tensioning was just coming from the hanging weights, but now that the wire can be tensioned significantly more, uh, there's a lot of flex and give in the system that wasn't there before that's been causing uh, bad performance in cuts similar to this cut here. Uh, it, the gantry can be pulled over so much that the bottom plates grind on the aluminum extrusions and it can cause the x-axis to skip uh, steps on the motor sometimes. So both axes get out of aligned for the given cut that's being performed. So as a intermediate step until I redesigned the system, I'm just, I added some braces to the aluminum extrusions on the X and U axis that helps keep them in place a bit and helps prevent the plate from grinding on the aluminum extrusions. So here's a side by side example of the machine cutting before and after the updates. On the left hand side is when it was the gravity tension system. And for these cuts I generally set the feed rate F command to about one millimeter per minute, but Gerbil with adaptive smoothing has a minimum speed of about 30 steps per second, which for my settings equates to about 40 millimeter per minute. And on the right side, uh, the cutting is set to a base feed rate of 120 millimeters per minute, but with adaptive uh, feed rate compensation for the fifth motor. So it goes up to about 180 millimeter per minute in some cases, depending on how the fifth motor is moving. And I still haven't tested out how fast I can get the machine to actually go with the new setup, so I'm hoping I can increase the speeds even more. I just need to work out the settings for the power supply. So now that I have this working, pretty much all I have left is tuning to make it work a bit better. Mainly working out the, the speeds and the power supply setting for the wire. I did have to replace the wire because after every cut it was snapping. Uh, before I was using uh, 32 gauge wire, now I moved it up to 28 gauge and I haven't had any wire snaps since then. Um, right now the electronics are sort of in a temporary space. I haven't extended the wire for the fifth motor uh, long enough so that I can have it in the extended configuration where the gantries are a meter apart. So I've just been temporarily setting this here. Um, Pretty much, I think I'm just going to do the minor tune-up and then leave it there. Uh, the plan is to design a new CNC wire cutter, one that has improved rigidity because this doesn't work out the best. A lot of the loss in rigidity is the 3D printed plate on the base flexes a lot, which isn't really the best 
uh, especially because that changes the wire length and all of the G code planning is based off of the two wire holding positions being a set distance apart. So if it can flex enough that that distance changes, it messes up the cuts. I'll need to also order some new springs, ones that have a higher stiffness coefficient. That way they don't spread out as far because I'd like to increase the tension but not lose as much of my cut space. So I'd like to keep like a five kilogram tension to be about one and a half or two centimeter extension instead of five kilogram goes, I think about five centimeters right now, which I've been going up to, uh, I've been usually cutting around five kilogram or six kilogram uh, tension and that puts the alligator clip pretty much right on the foam when I'm cutting fuselage pieces. I think the ultimate goal is to redesign the setup with, uh, these are 20 by 20 millimeter aluminum extensions. I think I'll go up to the 40 by 40 millimeter, so twice the thickness. And then I think I'm gonna cut all the plates out of six millimeter aluminum plates or out of plywood. Uh, now that I have my CNC uh, router, I can do stronger cuts. I can cut stronger pieces for the CNC wire cutter. Um, I'll also try to design it with more off-the-shelf parts because uh, the more off-the-shelf parts it's made out of, the easier it is for other people to build since you can order the vast majority of it online instead of having to do custom pieces. I'd like to I'd like to remove as many custom pieces as possible so that it's easier to build your own. Um, so far, the power supply and electronics are working. Uh, I think I think I want to move to a Marlin based board instead of Gerbil, and then ultimately I'd like to replace all of this setup right here with a load cell that the wire directly connects to, and then incorporate the load cell into the firmware for the controller. With the load cell implemented into the firmware, uh, it can check the tensioning at like 80 hertz. Uh, most load cells are either 10 samples per second or 80 samples per second. And I could set it up so that every, at 80 hertz, it's checking the tension and dynamically adjusting it. And then I can take over one of the higher number G code commands to specify what tension you want at the start of a cut. And then the load cell would just dynamically, it would dynamically measure the tension and control the motor based off of that so that it's a negative feedback loop. But yeah, so those are my plans for this setup in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.